Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create mist or dry ice in Blender using Mantaflow. I recorded a similar tutorial back in 2.79 and I had a couple requests asking for an updated version, so here it is. Let's go ahead and get started by using this default cube, we're not going to delete it this time. This is going to be our collision object. I'm going to press S and Z and scale it down along the Z axis. Then I'll press S, Shift, Z and scale it out this way. SY and make it a little bit longer. For our flow object, it's going to be a cylinder. I'll press Shift A, go underneath Mesh, and then add in a cylinder. I'll scale it along the Z axis and drag it upwards. And now for the overall domain, we're going to go over to Object, down to Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us with a basic material already in place. From there, we can go into Front View. I'll drag the domain down. Scale the entire thing up, something like this. Then I'll press S, Shift, and Z, and this will scale it along the X and the Y, but not the Z axis. And I'll scale it out to right about there. And now that we have all of our objects in place, let's go ahead and create the simulation. I'm going to go over to the Physics tab, and then for the Resolution Divisions, I'm going to bring that up to 128. That will be a pretty good resolution. And then for the Border Collision, make sure you have the bottom Border Collision turned on and any of the sides that you want the smoke to actually collide with. If we scroll down to the buoyancy density and the heat, these are the two values that we want to change to make the smoke sink. I'm going to be setting both of these to negative 5. This will make the smoke sink pretty fast. Now for the flow object, let's go ahead and select it. And then for the initial temperature, this also correlates with the heat. And let's talk about this for just a second. This heat value is negative five and the initial temperature is one. This means that the smoke will sink. If both of these values, the heat and the initial temperature are set to a negative value, the smoke will rise. You can think of it as multiplication. If one of them is set to positive, one negative, a negative times a positive equals a negative value, so the smoke will sink. If both of them are positive, the smoke will rise. If both of them are negative, the smoke will also rise. The initial temperature also controls the speed at which the smoke will actually get emitted. I'm going to set this up to a value of 6. So a lot of smoke will get emitted and it will shoot straight downwards. If we open up the flow source, we can set the surface emission. This is the area around the flow object. I'm going to set that to 1, so it's a little bit closer. And lastly, we're going to animate this use inflow. So what we're going to do is have it emit smoke up until 90 frames. We'll add in a keyframe to the use flow. Then we'll go over to the next frame, frame 91. Uncheck this and then add in another keyframe. Finally, the last step is to actually add a collision to this cube right here. So make sure it's selected. Click on fluid, set the type over to effector and make sure the effector type is set to collision. The surface thickness is the area around the object, and just to make sure the smoke actually collides with it, I'm going to bring it up to 0.4. With that done, we can go ahead and select our domain and scroll over to the baking section. The end frame I'm going to leave at 250. You can set an output if you want to. I'm also going to change the type over to modular. And then let's save our project just in case Blender crashes. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on Bake. The bake has finished and here is our result. I'm going to go ahead and skip through this a little bit. You can see the smoke goes over top of the collision object and flows straight down and it looks pretty good. Now let's get into the material. Let's select our domain and then open up the shader editor by splitting this view and switching over to the shader editor. I'm going to press N to close off that panel. To actually see the material a little bit better, let's set up the lighting and add in a ground plane. I'll press Shift A and add in a plane. We'll go into front view and bring this plane below the smoke right there and scale it up pretty big. For the world settings, I'm going to go over to the world and switch the color down to black. For the lighting, we can select the lamp in our scene, go over to the lamp settings. And for the power of this, I'm going to go up to 1500. Then if we press Z and go into rendered view, we can see exactly what this looks like. I'll go into top view and place the lamp right about here or so. With the lamp settings, I'm going to bring up the radius so we don't get this very harsh shadow. So over here in the radius, if we turn this up, we can see the shadow is a lot more soft. Now let's get into the material. We'll select the domain, and then with this material, what we're going to do is actually make it look like it's white smoke. 
If we bring up the color over to white, we can see it's not really working too well. Also, another thing that we need to do in the EV settings, go over here, we can open up volumetrics and set the tile size to two pixels. This will give us a lot more definition in the smoke. I'm also gonna turn on volumetric shadows. Now currently it looks just like smoke. It's, there's not really a misty look to it. So in order to add that in, we need to do a couple of different settings. The first thing that we will add is a volume info node. So I'll press shift A, go underneath input and then volume info. And with this volume, we can take it the density value, which is the smoke and plug that into whatever we want. So if I take the density value and plug that into the emission strength, we can see it already starts to look a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is actually add in some emission to the volume or the smoke to make it look a lot more light. To do this, we're going to press shift A and add in a converter and then a color ramp and we'll place that here. This will allow us to control it a little bit more. And another thing I'll add is a math node. So I'll press shift A, go underneath converter, math, and we'll place that here. If we then switch this over to multiply, this bottom value controls the lightness of the smoke. If I drag this up a lot more, you can see it is starting to become a lot more white. I'm gonna set the value up to one. And then for the color ramp, this will allow us to control the density of the smoke a little bit. So if I drag this all the way to the right, you can see it gets rid of all of that. If I drag the white value closer this way, it adds some lightness in. So I'm gonna bring this over here and then I'm also gonna drag the black just slightly this way so we get a nice looking effect. You can see if it's off, it's very thick all the way around, but if we drag this up a little bit, it'll make it look pretty good. Now with Eevee, the smoke doesn't actually emit light into the scene, it's only emitting light into the camera view. The only thing that emits light in Eevee is lamps, but if we switch over to cycles, the smoke will actually emit light, and this doesn't really look good. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is add in another math node. So I'll select this one, Shift D, and we'll place it here. And then we'll press Shift A, go underneath input, and then a light path. If we take the is camera ray and plug that into the bottom input, now the light is only emitting into the camera. The smoke is not emitting light anywhere else in the scene. If you are using Eevee like we are in this tutorial, you don't really need to worry about this step. But if you are using cycles, this is what you need to do to get the smoke to not emit light. And there we go, we've created the material and it looks pretty good. Again, if you want to add more light to the smoke, just turn up this bottom value in the multiply node. Turn it up, it adds a lot more light. I'm gonna leave it at one. The other materials in the scene are pretty easy. The plane is just gonna be a basic principled volume shader with a roughness set to a value of 0.1. The flow object, which is this object here, the cylinder, I'll create a new material. This one is just gonna have a nice blue color to represent almost like an ice looking object. Another thing I forgot to mention in the smoke material is if you want to change the color of it, you can do that with the emission color. If we select this, you can add in a blue material like this, a green, whatever color that you want with the emission color right here. For this scene, I'm actually gonna switch the color over to a slightly blue color, just very slightly like that and that will give it a cool effect. From there, we are ready to render. I'm gonna place my camera right about here in our scene and I'll hit Control Alt Zero to snap it to place. I'll select it, G middle mouse button and drag it backwards. We'll place it right here so we can see the whole domain in view. Then over in the output section, set an output of where you want your file to go to and the file format. I'm going to be rendering this as a movie file because we are using Eevee and it will render pretty fast. Normally, if I was to do an animation, I would render it as an image sequence, but since we're using Eevee, I don't see the need for that. Once you have your settings set up, make sure you set the end frame of what you want your animation to end at. Since we baked in 250 frames, I'm gonna leave it right there. Then go over to render and then render animation. The render has finished, now to view your results you can exit out of this window, go over to render and then click on view animation, or you can see the shortcut is Control F11. Once we do this, a new window will pop up and you'll be able to see your animation in real time. So there you go, that is how you create mist or dry ice smoke in Blender 2.9. Thank you for watching this tutorial, if you enjoyed consider leaving a like and comment down below what you would like to see next. Also, if you're interested, make sure to join the Discord, link is in the description. You can post your art there, ask questions, and just hang out. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.